kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Climate Watch update for the month of March. Proudly brought to you by resupply.co.nz. Well, let's get into the forecast. There's quite a bit going on at the moment. We've had this steady stream of high pressure tracking out of the Indian Ocean, across the southern portions of Australia, over the Tasman Sea, and across New Zealand, which is why it is now extremely dry. Drought conditions in parts of southwestern Western Australia, around South Australia, Victoria, and spreading out across the western side of New Zealand where it's getting very dry and one part of the North Island has technical drought at the moment. These lows to the north though, are providing a bit of a challenge to us doing a long range forecast because while we try to paint a picture for you of the next few weeks ahead, imagine sitting there on the floor, you've got the paper out, you're painting the picture for you to understand, and in comes Alfred the dog with his muddy paw prints and just walks straight over the top of it. So this tropical storm is going to muddy up the forecast a wee bit. It increases the chance of rain along the eastern side of Australia, around New Caledonia, and also around New Zealand, but it's not guaranteed to hit all three of those places. It might only get one of them. And so that's why it breaks the forecast a wee bit. So keep that in mind as we go through the forecast. But I gotta say the dry weather around at the moment is certainly dominating uh, the, the weather patterns around New Zealand and a large portion of Australia. Let's have a look at the climate highlights going into March now. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia. How about this? In uh, January, sea surface temperatures, highest on record dating back to 1900. That means when you've got that warmer water on the top of the sea, tropical cyclones, thunderstorms, they all get more energy, makes for heavier rain if you get a system like that. And globally, we are seeing the sea surface temperatures substantially above average. Now, talking about El Nino, still in neutral. That means we are not in La Nina, we are not in El Nino, and that's despite us seeing La Nina-like conditions observed in the atmosphere and in the sea since December, but it's not sustained enough to really see it going uh, into that La Nina category, which is why we're still in neutral and we're likely to stay that way. So let's take a look at the forecast. Let's track the air pressure going through the month of March, keeping it very simple, low pressure in blue boxes, high pressure in red boxes. And those red boxes are where it's more likely to be drier, hotter, uh, and more yeah, increasing that risk of having drought either being uh, declared, announced, or expanded. So let's see what is going on. Low pressure up here, obviously we've got the cyclone. Uh, we've added an extra zoomed in box so you can really see the isobars there. Quite a major storm offshore from Queensland. It might brush Queensland, it might hit Queensland. It's close enough to hit the, the state but it's also far enough at sea to remain there. So that's why it's frustrating as a forecaster for me to not be able to lock that in for you. But the high pressure bout is probably the main feature. It carries on keeping that very dry weather across Australia and pushing into the New Zealand area. So for the first week, you can't see it here because this only shows you day one, which is tomorrow, Saturday, uh, from when we recorded this. But you've got this big storm just south of Tasmania. And what that's going to do is it's going to come through in between high number one, let's call it that, over New Zealand, and high number two, which is still out over here in the Indian Ocean. There's a gap between those two systems that's going to allow some wet weather into the New Zealand area for the first week of March, and at the same time, Tropical Cyclone Alfred may also be bringing in some wet weather to the eastern side of Australia, not just Queensland, it might even go into New South Wales as well. Into the second week, you start to understand my frustration as a forecaster. Low pressure is still here. Now, whether that's still Tropical Cyclone Alfred or a new system that's kind of merging from all the low pressure that is still stuck up around Fiji and the tropical islands uh, and around New Caledonia as well. So that's worth keeping an eye on. Uh, low pressure continues around the top of Australia. That's normal for this time of the year. The monsoon has been spluttering at best. I mean, obviously we've had a couple of cyclones now. We've had Alfred and Zelia. We've seen some big thunderstorms, but there has not been the big widespread rain that you might expect around the top of Australia. Not yet anyway, and time's running out. You know, we're getting towards April when the dry season starts to return again. Look at the big high in week two as well. That's a big dominating feature. Whether the low pressure system drops down, comes into the New Zealand area where they're all there's this low pressure, I talked about the gap between high one and high number two. Well, that's high number one as we go into the second week of the month. The next high is out over the Tasman. That leaves a gap in between them, and that's why New Zealand has a chance 
over the first sort of several days of March of getting some wet weather, whether it's a small amount or a lot, that's the part I honestly can't answer this far out with so much uncertainty. Our website, ruralweather.co.nz, is a good one to follow for that one. If we get into the middle of the month, looks a bit more like normal again. Well, normal as in what we've been used to for the last couple of months. High pressure returns, quite a mountain of high pressure, and it's still connecting up to the Indian Ocean, which is not great news for southern parts of Australia, which I think are going to get much drier before they get wetter. Um, I don't think you can get drier when it's already completely dry though, so let me just think that one through. You know what I'm saying though, if it's dry now, it's not going to get wetter anytime soon. There are some thunderstorms up here, I mean, low pressure hangs around, you can see it dips down a wee bit, so there will be thunderstorms in the mix. It's not going to be, for everybody, completely dry, but there is, a, there is certainly a lot of dry weather coming through. Highs like that make windy easterlies for Western Australia, Highs like this one brings in, uh, not quite so hot, but it brings in more easterlies, which keeps that western side of New Zealand dry. So generally speaking, easterlies are in the mix quite a bit at the moment. So let's have a look at soil moisture anomalies. This is back into the New Zealand zone. This is where we were uh, at the end of January. This is where we are at the end of February. So it's getting uh, drier across the country, that is for sure, certainly on the western side of the North Island, but I think now you can safely say it's expanding out into other regions. You're not seeing blue around many parts of New Zealand except for just down here around Fiordland. So most of the country drying out more and more. The South Island perhaps has a little bit more capacity to be dry, but the North Island really does need some rain quite soon. Having a look at the drought index map, now this has changed. We had drought in the western central part of the North Island only a week or two ago, but we got some rain last week. And for some of you, it was 30 millimetres. That's quite a good amount to get. It's not enough to reverse everything, but it's certainly enough to put a dent in it. The only area that's showing up as drought, a new one, that's come up into the very western side uh, of, uh, of Northland, that does take you technically into that, uh, into that drought zone. But around it, you're in the extremely dry or very dry or dry zones. And they have increased a little bit. So we've seen kind of the worst area decrease, but the general dry uh, increase around New Zealand, so more easterlies coming back into the forecast, not so good. We need something to come out of the tropics uh, or out of the Tasman Sea to really reverse that. From a marine heatwave point of view around New Zealand, you are seeing marine heatwaves now developing around the North Island, not so much around the South Island. Temperatures are pretty mild, so if you want to go for a swim at the moment, March is the peak of uh, sea surface temperatures. They get to their warmest in this month around Australia and New Zealand, so like swimming, this is the time of the year to be doing it. It's the reason also why we're in the peak of the tropical cyclone season. Let's have a look at the bigger picture now around uh, the globe. You can certainly see all this red and pink shading. It's hugging many parts of Australia, the Tasman Sea, New Zealand, and further afield. Now, this is a little bit delayed from a couple of weeks ago, which is why it doesn't quite line up with the marine heat wave map we just showed you for New Zealand. But it does show a large kind of pool of warmer than average weather around that may also be sparking some more of those big storms down around the Southern Ocean. One last map before we get into the rain forecast. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, March temperatures showing it's going to be above normal right across Australia. Only one little exception up here around some of the coastal parts of Queensland. Perhaps a bit more cloud and rain coming off the sea. That's it. Otherwise, the entire continent's looking warmer than average, and so too is New Zealand. But we don't have a map for New Zealand because NIWA, our government, uh, they use their energy to compete against the taxpayer, which is highly unusual and is why I don't have a map to show you uh, for the New Zealand area. Let's get into rain. Seven day departure from normal, then we can do the half month forecast. This shows your tropical cyclone Alfred. So that big dark blue area is taking you 800% above your normal rainfall. Now that is all out at sea, but it doesn't take much. One of those high pressure zones down in the south here or around New Zealand, to reduce in size or move away a little bit, that wet weather could push right into Australia with a significant rain and flood event. Equally, it could stay out at sea and move further out at sea. Future tracking suggests it could come down towards New Zealand. You see some blue in the New Zealand area as well. That's due to some low pressure in the first week coming in. It is very messy. Some areas will get rain, others won't. 
could be frustrating even within just one region about that. And around the rest of Australia, a lot of dry weather, but you do see thunderstorms showing up in some of these uh, pale areas. So that will be the area most likely to get relief. So not places like much of uh, a large portion of Victoria, certainly west of Melbourne, around South Australia, and once more that southwestern corner of Western Australia and some further parts northwards going into inland Queensland and New South Wales. So some big, large, dry areas. Looks as though New Zealand has a chance of some relief. So here is the possible rainfall. Usually we say expected rainfall. Today we're using the word possible, and that is because of what is happening out here in the Tasman and the Coral Sea areas, thanks to Cyclone Alfred, the leftovers from Saru and any other low pressure that may be forming in the Tasman, it makes it messy into the New Zealand area. So I wouldn't 100% lock in that big blob of rain, which is 100, 150 millimetres coming through there or more. That's not locked in. It's possible. It all depends on what happens with Alfred and the remnants up here as it all moves through over the next week and a half. Worth noting, the blue and the green just nearby, including to the north of New Zealand, bottom of the scale, not much. So that's why this is a messy forecast for New Zealand. For Australia, it's a little more locked in. These white boxes show the regions most likely to be driest, which is unfortunate because it's a number of farming and growing communities, those who rely on rainwater. You do see rain along the eastern side, though, coming into New South Wales and Queensland, and the white circle here around parts of Queensland might still change depending on Alfred's tracking, but certainly there's still a bit of uncertainty especially around the New Zealand, Tasman, and the eastern coastal side of Australia. That is a little more uncertain, but once you go further inland, especially to the south, that is looking more locked in to be drier. Hopefully I can give you some better news going into the month. Here is the 10-day one, um, because I don't really trust that 15-day one, one for New Zealand quite so much. Even the 10-day one shows these areas of dry all around these areas of rain. So hit and miss, and it only takes another day or two of updates and some of that rain might shift out to sea. So don't get too excited if you need rain, but hopefully some silver linings going into this month, getting a bit of rain relief from uh, the messy weather patterns that we tend to get going into autumn. And that is all from me. Big thanks to our sponsor, Resupply, uh, for supporting our Climate Watch updates. We'll be back again in one month, and obviously on our website over the next few weeks ahead, we'll be monitoring very closely any potential for the rain forecast we've just showed you to be breaking. So keep an eye on our New Zealand and Australia updates across the week to make more sense of that. Hopefully the big picture, though, does let you understand what is happening on the bigger scale around Australasia. Have a great month ahead. <laughs>